Hey guys, today we did something that no Tesla owner should ever have to do, and that is go look at minivans. Um, so, <clears throat> the reason is uh, car seat situations, which we're going to go over uh, right now. And we've got three car seats. Currently, we only have two kids, but we have some extra car seats. And we're trying to figure out how to arrange them in the Model X so you don't have to break your back or um, break a kid's leg by smashing it in the back. Oh, and this is Lacey. You don't see her in a lot of videos. Hi. Uh, so currently we have uh, a three-year-old and a one-year-old. Both of them are in rear-facing seats. So we have one ginormous is that, Bright is that text. convertible. Yes, it goes forward or rear-facing. That's what convertible means? Yes. Okay. So this is a convertible Britex, and then we have an Infit Maxi Cozy, which is only rear facing and it's pretty convenient because it's got a base that just straps in and then you can easily take the thingy out but as i've shown in earlier videos rear facing car seats take a lot of um, longitudinal space so your front seats have to be forward and these seats have to be backwards which squishes up the people in the back row actually you can't really fit people in the back row if you have these in there anyway so we have these two and we had this one over on the side, usually for the three-year-old, and then the one-year-old is in the middle. The oh, side. They're both on the sides. Yeah, they're both on the sides. <clears throat> so we're trying to figure out if we have another infant in another year, two years, and then maybe another one beyond that. How are we going to fit everybody with rear-facing and, and forward-facing boosters and whatever? So if we had three kids... That means we're going to have, in two years, the oldest one will be five, so that will be booster seat uh, compatible, right? She'll be a booster seat. Yeah, she's old enough for a booster seat, but it would still have a harness. And what's and the... And smaller sides. What weight do they have to be for booster? Um, I actually don't know the... It's something like 40... No, wait, 40 pounds it's is when smaller, they go forward. It's smaller than you think, but we also take more precautions when it comes to car seats. So our children rear space a lot longer than average. So they will also be upgrading to a booster much later. The Britax goes to, I think it's like 50 pounds okay. forward facing. So she could be in the Britax until she ages out of a booster or car seat period. Forward facing. Yeah, forward facing. Um, she'll okay. age out and way out probably by four. but. Um, the boosters are less bulky, yeah. so it's kind of nice to have those. Although the seatbelts, they'll be using conventional seatbelts. Oh wait, you said something Yeah, like now they can also come with, they, traditionally they don't have a latch and even a back, but now you can get them with latches and a back, and you can get them with a five-point harness, which is a lot safer just because children are not, don't sit safely in traditional latch so they're, ba they're basically like skinny car seats at that point. Yeah. Because the problem I've heard some people have is that the boosters, it's hard to operate the regular car, it's hard for the kids to operate the regular seat belt because yeah. the booster's so wide. Yeah. Anyway, so if we have three kids, we're going to have a five-year-old, which it will be forward-facing, could be in a booster. We'll have a three-year-old, <laughs> right? If life goes as planned. Yeah. Well. Well, Felicity will be three. <laughs> well, I mean, if we have a third child. Yeah, Felicity will be three, so she'll be rear-facing still. And then we would have a rear-facing infant. So one option is three across. Which, the complication there is that you have to pick who goes in the middle. And I had a friend's child once, so I had three rear-facing children across. And I told Brandon I wanted to kill the car because it was so hard to get the third child into the middle rear facing. I had to climb over the baby like this, where he's at, to reach and put a two-year-old in the middle. Now, one of the problems is that our the middle does not have latch buckles, and our infant car seat does not fit well in the middle row. We had it in a middle row on a trip once, but the safety belt, the, the seat belt didn't work very well. The car seat base slid and you're not supposed to be able to wiggle the car seat more than a half an inch. Yeah, so, let, me, well, let me show you that. Yeah. That's hard to describe. Minor technical difficulties. So you have two options with the car seat. You can either do the belt that is already in the car or they come with um, latches are best. Latches. 
You can only do one or the other. There's no there's no latches in the middle seat. Latch anchors. Latch anchors for the middle seat. So at least on this one, you have to thread through the seat belt like this. But the problem is, the more you tighten it, the more it's actually lifting up the seat. So it ends up kind of pivoting and wiggling so we couldn't get it tight. So that kind of limits our use of this seat. And that's just this particular car seat. That might be different with a different infant seat. Yeah. So what we decided to do to try out That's was that the bright tax doesn't need to go with both the waist belt and the shoulder belt through. So the bright tax can actually fit really well in the middle and not be wiggly. Um, in which case we decided, you know, we'll try it for now. But in the long term, when we need a third child in the car, what we would do is we would put the infant car seat where I am sitting which then gives us the option to put the third child in the back row. And like we said, we wouldn't really want the third child here because it's just too hard to get to the child in the middle. Let's, so let's just show the three across. And then oh yeah. The okay. Road. Can you put that one in? Yeah. So this is if we had one child forward facing and two children rear facing, which as you could see, I wouldn't be able to get to the child in the middle very well from this side. Granted, this is a pretty bulky, it's a maxi cozy, we don't use it anymore. Um, so while they could climb in by themselves, it would be really difficult for me to buckle them in. And at this age, under four, it's going to be really difficult for them to buckle themselves in. So I could come around. So it really helps to have the headroom here, but you're still kind of cantilevering yeah. yourself into the third row with all this other bulkhead. Yeah. And we could take the infant out, but we either have to put them on the front seat while we're putting the middle child in or put them on the ground, neither of which are really good options when you're in a parking lot. Um, so again, this we're kind of limited because we have rear facing car seats. This would be a lot easier if you had all forward facing. Yeah. And by the way, the advantage to having, the safety advantage to rear facing is that most of your accidents are forward collisions and you want this whole back protecting the kids when they have those deceleration forces. Uh, rear ending uh, collisions, while they can be severe, usually the time they're, they're not as severe. So it's safer to have the little bowls of mush um, facing this way. And then when they're older and their bones are a little more secure, then they can turn around and they can be restrained by a regular Car seat. Yeah, and it's not the law in a lot of states. The law is now becoming age two, which we still think is necessary. But just for preference, we choose to keep them rear facing as long as possible because that's what studies show is the safest option. But plenty of people do turn them sooner. Um, okay, so, so we can't do three across. Well, we could, but oh. what we decided is if we were to do three across, we could do the middle child forward facing. So when Cordelia is five, she could be forward facing, and if this seat was rear facing, she could probably be small enough and children are flexible that she could climb behind the seat on the driver's side, um, which is possible. She would probably still need some assistance getting in and out, which we probably could reach her from the driver's seat or the passenger seat. Here, I got it. Um, yeah, it's, it's angled right now, so I don't know how that can adjust it. So here's another option of having Three across. big kid in the middle. So uh, yeah, look how close the forward facing, can you see my hand? Forward facing seat is to the driver um, head. Yeah. If you're six feet or taller, that's gonna be a problem. And if you're for, short, it's not a big deal. For some reason you're not supposed to, well, you're not supposed to push the car seat. So your seat can touch the car seat from the front, but if it pushes it, it kind of knocks it out of alignment and it messes up the stability of how it's installed. By the way, that's much better than the Model S because in the Model X you ride much more vertically. So yeah. the driver's legs can go down instead of forward like they do in the Model S. And so you have a little bit more leeway for pushing the, the seat um, farther forward to accommodate your car seats. Anyway, so this is another option of having the two youngest rear facing and then having a little uh, a, the toddler who can go forward facing, who can just climb under, climb under or climb over. She loves to climb, so it would work well. Yeah, and she, I mean, even though she'll be bigger, she's probably still small enough that she could go under. Um, but she does have to have the 
motor skills to be able to buckle and unbuckle herself easily because it is a stretch for the adult to reach over. Plus, if there's a child here and you're reaching over them, you're kind of, it just is difficult. We decided if it, if we do do this, what we would prefer is to have the forward facing child in the back row. So, so what we're the... trying to figure out is how that's going to look. So we can show you what we've run into. By the way, uh, so this is, so on the right seat is the single, yeah. this is a 60, 40 split. So this is the 40%, which is one seat. That's two seat. They're connected. And you might, if you have a car seat here, you might have to push it a little bit, but it does open and yeah. close. So that, that and there are okay. narrower car seats. We possibly would end up just finding a car seat that fits the car better. There's like the Diono is very narrow, so we might not have that problem. And if you want to know somebody that has the Dionos, uh, Tesla owners, Silicon Valley Twitter handle, he has Dionos. And you can also get 10% off through him. <laughs> All right, so here's some of the challenges and what works for the back seat. We have it all the way back. It is all the way back. Both seats are all the way back right now. So if I were to put this seat up and it's all the way reclined, our daughter is two and we put her down here and she had to point her toes to get them down. So when she's actually the age, age appropriate to be back here at four or five, her feet are gonna be bigger, her legs are longer. It's virtually impossible for her, for her to sit back there with that amount of space. So that leaves us with the option of, we pretty much always have to keep the seat down. We put her in here and we did notice she actually could comfortably sit and have her feet here even though her knee runs into this a little bit. And the big problem is is that this has to be back while Brandon is in the car. If we put that forward and give that child more space, it's really too close for him on the driver's side. And well, that person not even in correctly. But if I if I slide it forward, that's ideal for that space, but you really for one, you can't with the rear facing on this side, which the child would probably be in the middle. But no, there would be a seat here still because there couldn't be a seat there. So it wouldn't, it's not, you can't, we can't actually put this seat forward, one for the driver and two for the rear facing seat if that's and still you, here. You might say, why not just tilt it forward? And you can, but you're supposed to, um, they're supposed to be fairly reclined when they're rear facing. Yeah. So you, it could be, it could be, we uh, tilt it up a little bit, but you can't do that. It still takes up a lot of room. Yeah, no it doesn't what. make a big difference too. Uh, it does once it's strapped in. Yeah, it's tighter, but it's still, you know, he'd, he'd still be touching the seat at its furthest back. So this one has to be far back. Which, yeah. Now, if you do have to have this seat up, they do go forward. Which if it's just a normal person sitting here, not in a car seat, um, you still have enough space here for a normal human. Um, and then in that case, there is quite a bit more leg room. It's still, because these seats are indented, it still kind of is uh, overlaps here, but a small kid can drape, drape their kids, drape their kids, drape their legs right there. Um, so that will work, but this, Jerry rigging does not work if you have a rear facing over there. Okay, so the configuration that, that we were landing on if we had three was, well, this can't be in the this middle. This would be here and this would be in the middle. So the toddler would be in the middle and the infant would be on the driver's side. Also, this does slide forward like this, which is really convenient, but you can't drive with it in this. It gives yeah, it you- lock. It gives you a warning. Yeah, it doesn't lock. It gives you a warning that the seat is not secured. So it has to either be down or back or something. But like this, there's plenty of room there. And then for this one, you either have to sit on this way or... I'd probably put the seat back up. It's just more accessible. Put the seat back up and then mm -hmm. operate this way or whatever. Which... By this age, they can at least get in the seat by themselves. So. Yeah, third row seat, not very accommodating for car seats. We have pretty bulky ones, so there's probably others. Like, I think the Diono does not come up as high and it doesn't come out as far. Yeah, that would give more leg room. So, yeah, so you'd have much better leg room. And they're quite narrow. These are actually, uh, I think they're 18 inches or 17, I can't remember. But I'm pretty sure the Dionos are one of the narrowest car seats that yeah. you can get. Although the Brightex we got, we when we bought it, we measured knowing we could do three across if we had to. 
They also don't have high arms, so if you do have three across, yeah. you don't have as much bulk. So this is what we figured we could do with um, three small kids. Once they're all out of car seats, not, there's no problems with any of this. So that's, you know, 10 years now. <laughs> yeah. So really what it comes down to is I am trying to decide because I get frustrated with the doors. They can be difficult to get the kids in and out, especially in a hurry, which if you have young children, it feels like you're always in a hurry. And I'll show you we, that. What? Oh, yeah. There'll be nothing in the way and they won't open or close. So occasionally, they will only open part way, which you can work around. But in order to open them fully, you either have to push the handle again, which sometimes works, or you have to hold the button and wait while you're holding everything until they go all the way up. They are very nice, like when it's raining and you've got coverage and because there's so much extra headroom right here, right here. It actually like does drip sometimes. Yeah, the seal is a little bit too closed. There needs to be something here that keeps this uh, gap open a little bit more. Water will drip right here and it's supposed to be caught by like these, actually this, but this is too far over. And so there needs to be something that like holds this open a little bit more for the rain to get caught and then it will go down. So occasionally you do get some precipitation inside. Okay, so this is three. And then if we were gonna go, if you have four kids, um, the math gets harder. Yeah. So we would have one kid that's definitely in a booster or kind of getting out of a boost booster. So that kid would probably have to go in the back corner but again, this seat has to be all the way back, in which case, oh, here's another idea though. Well, we talked about that. That seat that you're on could be forward facing by that time and you still only have one child in the back row, but they have to be able to get in the back row. Um, well, we'd have two and two. So we'd have two rear facing, we'd have two forward yeah. facing. So we could have someone here forward facing and then they either climb in through the trunk well, it would be better to put forward facing here because then you can move this whole bench forward because it's not going to Oh, yeah, this. that's true. And then... Well, you can't have rear facing back there. They don't fit. No, no, the, you'd have a rear facing middle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's a, that's oh, wait, a possibility. You've... Yeah, because this can go forward a lot if this is forward facing. And think... then there's enough room for a forward facing child in the back. Yeah, but we still need two rear facing. Yeah. So that means you'd have to have a rear facing here. Yeah, so you'd have to have three across. Ultimately, it's not feasible to have two children in the back row because the bench seat has to be all the way back for the driver's sake if there's a rear-facing seat here and there we can't fit rear-facing in the back. Well, I'm still trying to figure it out because the booster kid could go anywhere. Yeah. Two. Booster kid could go here. So you'd have to have the two rear-facing here. No, this could be, yeah, well, no, this one could be forward facing and these two could be rear facing. So you have this one up. Yeah. But it'd have to be up all the time to have a seat there. And then I honestly thought, you know, a child could climb in through the back to get to their seat. You, they just have to be fully independent for buckling and unbuckling because an adult can't reach there. So yeah, the child in the back could only get in and I mean they could possibly squeeze through behind this seat kids are small but it's pretty sloped and since we live in cold weather their boots could get stuck they could probably slip when they're wet down that side where you're at because it's pretty sloped but it could be done with four. Oh, see it's not latched though so no well, what, but, I'm, what I'm thinking though is uh, so that one can go forward yeah this one could go forward at that point which is how that child would fit back there. But even me, like, I guess I could squeeze in back here. But I don't know. I'm a shorter than average person, so I guess a, I guess a kid could squeeze in and out without the seats moving forward. But if I were to get in and out this way regularly, I'm worried about, one, them slipping here because this is pretty slick. And, yeah, if you have big boots on, 
a kid is definitely more limber than me, but they could do it. Or yeah, we could keep one of the back row seats down and they can climb in through the back. So it's possible. So four is pretty tough. Four car seats. Well, four, three car seats and a booster. So don't have another kid until your kid's out of car seats. <laughs> That's what we're basing our future life on. So these are more reasons for the Tesla Model M or the minivan, Tesla minivan, <laughs> where um, it needs to be mostly longer. A lot yeah. of this stuff wouldn't be an issue if like there was more space more leg space in the back and then um, you need more cargo space too so probably about f maybe five inches more total to the vehicle length and yeah. it would be more doable um, or like you said have you gotten the six-seater which we bought this planning we could have it long term but yeah although the six seater, so the the second row bench, the set, the seven seater is three thousand extra. The six seater is actually a six thousand dollar option. Oh wow! Because there's like they're like special seats like this, and I think they do that thing like um, like Chrysler where you push this button oh, yeah, and, and, and that, that seat goes forward too. Makes it really accessible because it's meant so that adults can sit in the third row, right? Yeah, okay. and it's supposed to be car seat compatible too. Which I but, mean. If there was a way to, or if you could like remove one of these seats, that would be yeah. really good. If that seat was removable, that would solve all of our problems. You can't do uh, you can't do seats that fold into the floor because that's where the battery is, so that's not an option. But um, yeah, so if it was more, they need something that's more like multi -car, multi car seat friendly. I don't think people that are driving Teslas typically want four kids. Although, I, don't I guess know. Elon Musk does. <laughs> yeah, he's got five. Um, yeah. I don't know. We're just trying to decide if we can do this for or have three built, kids. Or, or have built-in boosters to the back seat so you don't have to have an yeah. additional structure. That would work too. They do that in a lot of... I don't know if they do that anymore, but they were doing it for a while. But it's just like a little bench that pops up. All right, so if you have any suggestions for two rear-facing and two, two rear-facing, one forward-facing, and one booster kid, let us know. Yeah. Besides putting one in the front seat. Yeah, and I'm the one that wanted a minivan, and we went and looked, and there are definitely advantages. I really liked the space, but I will say I, I was more conflicted than I thought it would be. Like a month ago, I was ready to just be done and get a minivan, but I do really like this car. There are features that are irresistible uh, one of the big ones is the backup camera mm -hmm. like even new cars have Stink. super super crappy backup cameras which is very surprising because it's kind of a basic entity um, what else oh like parking sensors and safety sensors. Yeah. that's like an additional option it's not like standard equipment um, and so you have to like but you can't just buy that. You have to get like this whole package that includes it. Yeah, you have it. to go to the top tier of vehicles to get that. So to be safe, you really have to fork it out for conventional auto. Yeah. Um, and not having to get gas. I mean, that one ranks pretty high. Oh, that, yeah. Even though you don't get gas that often, it would be... I just don't miss that. I love not waiting in line to get gas. No gas, no oil changes. The technology uh, is, of course, unparalleled because it's so... Phone, yeah, using yes. your phone with the car. Although that it, that appears to be pretty decent, all the cars had like no, I mean I mean like auto con uh, app connect and no, I don't mean for media. I mean for like pre pre warming and yeah. The oh well, I thought I left myself out of the car the other day and I could have just called Brandon. So oh, and you know like the child heat safety feature is oh yeah really comforting cabin overheat protection. That's really nice. Um, anyway, I forgot what I was. Oh, yeah. it's just. It's just the seat arrangements and the space inside that yeah. they, it, they just need like a bigger shell. Like they could even make one that's not as fancy. Just make like a comfortable box that's really safe that fits a lot of kids. <laughs> yeah, the length, the length is the big one. It's, I mean, I can manage the doors. I just don't know how well we can fit a third child. And I don't know, it feels tight. It's really hard to get things in and out from behind rear facing seats and Brandon really doesn't actually sit at a fully reclined spot because there's a seat behind him which we realized we we're gonna actually try the convertible seat in the middle since that's the one that safely fits there because we have nothing to lose 
but that actually could solve that problem in our long-term plans. It's just, um, well, in the short-term plans, it's just the long-term that we don't want to buy another car and lose money on it if it's not a good long-term vehicle for our family. Yeah. We'll see. Of course, if they really come out with full self-driving, <laughs> then if that actually works, then I can just take this to work and then send the car back home. Yeah, we'll be a one-family car. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, one car family. Well, we have been for two months, so. Oh, that's true. Yeah, with my scooter. That doesn't work in the winter, though. No. So, anyway, well, this has been a long video. Uh, so, I hope it's been interesting. Um, if you're going to get a Model X, they're cool. Or a Model S or a Model 3, you can use my referral code. I keep it in the description. So. Yeah, and with two kids, it's very manageable. As a mother, I love it. I do think there's a lot of amazing features, despite the some glitches but I think it's really great for two kids I just think more than that becomes complicated with your needs I'm very safe it very is good very safe. crash ratings yep. all right see you guys